y'all, it is Bob the Drag Queen coming to you from my basement in Washington Heights. It is a pit stop, and today we have one of Hollywood's top producers in the studio. Please welcome Miss Alexis Michelle. Hi, Bob. Hey, girl, how are you? You know, considering I'm okay, if you hear any yelling from outside, it is because everybody is cheering out their windows for our, all of our healthcare workers. Yes. We're switching shifts right now. Essential workers, essential workers. I don't know if you know this or not, but Britta's from New York City. I just want to throw that out there. And she, yeah, she doesn't talk about it much. She's really shy about it. It's very weird. Britta went home and Jan is like wrecked. I mean, she is ruined crying, like sobbing, going through it. It's a unique position to be in, I think, to be there with someone who you consider like one of your best duties. And so, you know, I understand that there's like, in the pressure cooker that is filming Drag Race, all of a sudden, like, you know, someone who's like that for you is gone. I, I can see it shaking you up. Girl, it's like being at summer camp. You know when you're at summer camp and you're a kid and you go there and like everyone, you're like, these are literally my best friends in the world. I could literally never live without them. And then after you leave, you're like, oh, they were cool. Here's a question. Did you cry? I can't remember. Did you cry on Drag Race? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stop crying. Okay, so now on to the mini challenge. All the girls have to curate this uh, fab fit fun box, but they have to do it in a way to throw shade. So for example, they'll be like, yours included a bottle of water because your wig looks thirsty. So what did you think of this challenge? You know what? I thought this was a really cute mini challenge. Personally, I like this better than the reading challenge. Okay, so Jackie Cox and Gigi Good win this little mini shade challenge. Do you agree? Yes, I felt that Jackie and Gigi and also Widow and Jada were particularly sharp and quick and clever in this. So I thought it was a good a good win for Jackie and Gigi. Jackie is a clever, clever queen. She's a wordsmith. And you know, this really played to her strengths. It was really fun. This was what I what I said about you. This was before you you were cast on drag race. I always said when Bob goes on drag race, Bob will win drag race because of what's in here. Oh my God, I, um, are you pointing at your, no. Um, because of what's in her rump. So for the main challenge this week, the girls have to create a completely unnecessary drag item for the lifestyle brand Droop. And I also love that in Droop, uh, in the P, Sexy Broccoli is back again, girl. <laughs> like, the Sexy Broccoli showing up through, she's the mascot of the season. I think that at this point, Dahlia should change her drag name to Sexy Broccoli. Or it could at least be her social media handle across all platforms. Yeah, Dahlia Sexy Broccoli Sin. All right, so what do you think about this challenge? This is a great challenge. It really gives the girls a chance to shine by themselves. You know, you don't have the pressure of trying to lift anybody up in a group challenge. And it's really a chance for you to get to show your personality, your creativity. Yeah strength as a solo entity, which is so important. So who stood out to you as having like a really strong commercial? I would have to say my favorites were definitely um, Jackie Cox and Heidi. Every episode, I fall more and more in love with Heidi. Every episode, I'm like, this queen is just so genuine, so funny, so, she's so full of soul and heart. Yeah, you know, it just goes to show you can't fake personality. True. Yeah irresistible. Jackie Cox had such a clear vision, such a strong idea for what she wanted to do. Everything from the stop and go to the for you, like to the for you, like everything she did was, she really was thinking very hard about what she was doing and it came off flawlessly. Of course, you know, we like to build the drama when we're watching Drag Race. So it was hard to tell how her concept was going to translate to the final product. And uh, Bob Harper certainly didn't make us any more confident. I saw the thirst in those bitches' eyes when he walked in the room. And honey, I know how that feels when you are at Drag Race and you are thirsty and a man comes in the room. Baby, it's, it's how I feel right now during this quarantine, bitch. Yeah, you, you got, at this point, uh, when the Uber Eats guy drops off the food, I'm like, you wanna hang out? Uh, when, I, when I take my dog out for his walks during this quarantine, the most action I'm getting is watching joggers running by. I'm like... The, oh, joggers are keep making, the, joggers make the world go round. That's the real tea. Really like Jackie's. And I thought it was so hilarious how she was like, she was producing. I know a thing or two about producing TV work. 
She coming for your title, girl. She coming for your title. You know what? She can join, Jackie can join the ranks of Alexis Michelle, Monique Hart, and now Jackie Cox as television producers on Drag Race. Y'all can do the drag version of the producers. Absolutely. Called the Produce Hers. Get it? <laughs> Anyone? All right, f you guys. That was really funny. So like when Crystal was trying to do her commercial and like describing it, I was like so confused. I was like, what the f is going on? Did you get anything out of that? I, I'll tell you what I got out of it. Crystal continues to be half of my trade of the season. And I don't know what she was doing, but I was turned on sexually during her filming. Quarantine is real. Coronavirus. I like the mullet. I like those juicy thigh pads. Mm. <laughs> Who struggled during that commercial for you? I could tell that Widow and Gigi were a little bit low energy. And yeah. Hard to, to translate. And then on the other side of things, it seemed like Jan came in with all the energy. I have to say to my, to my daughter's credit, we both come from a theatrical background and you're always taught in theater, don't do too little. Yeah. People or to do too much, and the director will tell you to reel it in. It is much easier to rein someone in than it is to be like, please give me more, please do more than what you're doing. I need more than that, so I, I feel that. Oh my God, the category is Black Wedding. These girls look so good. What a gorgeous runway, gorgeous. They just, oh my God, they, look, they all look so amazing. Yes, really beautiful, uh, a strong week for, for many of these girls. So which look on the runway was your favorite? They were all so good, it's hard to pick. My two favorite looks on this runway were definitely Jan and Crystal. Crystal's look was so much different than everyone else's. She was really going for this, like the dust and the rotted and the falling apart and the really, and that Michelle, and Michelle finally gave us a props. Michelle said, you are switching up your makeup. Like, I think we've seen more makeup versatility from Crystal than anyone in the competition. And where Crystal excelled, was it was so conceptual. What did you like about Jan's look? I think Jan is a terrific makeup artist and I think that her makeup was a true high point tonight. Really, really knows how to be, beat the mug. And I felt that the feathers and the proportion of the skirt were so exquisite and so couture from the front. And then there was a little bit of a concept when she turned around and it said, I don't. Yeah, cause she took the ring off and threw it down. That was fierce. My question for Gigi is like, was that a wedding dress? I do think that that was a silhouette that brides wore. What I do love about Gigi pretty much every week on the runway is how incredibly referential she is. Yeah. You glance at it, you know what it is, you know where the inspiration came from, and it like fills you with this satisfied feeling of nostalgia. Yeah, all of her looks have a frame of reference, which I appreciate. Whose look was your least favorite? Jada, who, is one of the most stunning queens I've ever seen and worked with. Looks beautiful every single week on the runway, but for me, there was no innovation in that bride. I'll give you that. There wasn't a lot of innovation, but she just looked so good. Don't get me wrong. I think she is like the most stunning. And for the record, what the hell is Michelle Visage talking about calling her the dark horse of this competition? She's a front runner. Heidi wore the world's smallest veil and biggest shoulders. Yeah, just covering up just her forehead. <laughs> hey, Bob, say hi. Say hi to George. Oh, hey, George. How are you? Good. <laughs> looking, looking adorable. How long have you had this little cutie? I adopted George about a week before everything got locked down with quarantine, and thank goodness I got him when I did. I didn't know how crazy things were gonna get, but he has been a great savior and addition to the household. And the time has come. Rue is not around this season, girl. Two times already, she has asked the question, who should go home? Every girl, including Widow, says Widow. Every single girl said Widow. Can I just say to anyone watching, if you are only gonna be on season 13 or 14 or 29 or All Stars or whatever, or if you're going to be on Project Runway, Biggest Loser, or if he's gonna be on the Great British Baking Show. When they ask you who should go home, do not, under any circumstances, say your own name. I mean, don't even put your name in the sentence. Don't even whisper your name. Don't think, don't think your name. 
don't think, just say anyone. Say, I would have said RuPaul if I would have said myself. <laughs> you know, I remember before I went on Drag Race, I thought, oh, lip syncing for your life. That's great. That's an, a chance to show the world what you do. But when you are there, it is the last place you want to be. When RuPaul says the time has come to lip sync for your life, you feel that you're like, oh my God, this is literally life and death. It is one of the scariest things I've ever done. Your heart falls into your feet. I mean, and quite frankly, I knew I wasn't going home and I was still scared. After the judges' critiques, uh, we found out that Heidi has won this week's challenge. How do you feel about this? So excited for Heidi. She's been shining from her heart and from her soul and from her talent throughout the competition. So it's great to see her have a moment in the sun. She really deserves it. Is this an unfair statement? I wrote this down, I don't know if it's unfair. I feel like everyone was so happy that Heidi won because deep down, we don't think she's gonna win Drag Race. It's great. I mean, nobody wants to see the front runners win the whole season. You wanna see the hills and the valleys. You wanna see the ebb and the flow of it all. And so getting to have this girl who's like totally won our hearts. Sorry, I'm laughing. Because... I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm just laughing at myself because you were like, no one wants to see the front runners winning the whole season. And I just go, <laughs> okay, unfortunately, in the bottom two, it is Widow Von Du versus your daughter, Jan. I understand that maybe Jan was toward the bottom, but I don't know if she really belonged in the bottom. And, I, and I, I'm really... Mm. I'm Who belonged there, Mom? Say their names. I, for me, for me, I probably would have put... Um, I probably would have put Gigi in the bottom two because it was so, so flat. Um, but yeah, I, okay, all right, now let's, bitch, we're on the, let's play the game. We're, we're getting real now. If I was RuPaul, it, it is once again Bob the Drag Queen's Drag Race, I would have put Gigi and Sherry in the bottom. And as soon as I heard them say Shaka Khan, I was like, bye Jan. Watching Widow lip sync earlier in the challenge and in all the other challenges, like she has a certain soulfulness and essence to her. And Jan is very like musical theater. Like she's more wicked than she is Carolina Change. You know what I mean? You could have seen Jan crumble under the, the challenge of this lip sync, but she turned it out. She was fighting so hard to the end. Jan didn't flunder. It's not like she didn't do a good job, but this song was definitely more suited for Widow. So Widow has won the lip sync and Jan goes home. Do you agree with this verdict? Based on the lip sync, I can see why. Now, if Jan is watching this right now, what do you have to say to her? Your, your baby's watching. What do you have to say? Jan, I, and not just me, the whole world is so proud of you. We are so glad we got to know you, to see your star power, your talent. I mean, the girl is already among fan favorites, for sure. I'm watching how the children are eating for her. They are living for her as they should. So we are so proud of you. Sorry that it had to go down like this today, um, but you did not let anybody down. That's so sweet. And what I would say is, Jane, you still owe me five bucks from that night at the diner. I haven't forgot that bitch. All right, thank you so much, Alexis, for joining us today. Bob, it is always a pleasure. Uh, being with you, seeing you, especially from 10 miles away. <laughs> Thank you all so much for continuing to watch the at-home version of The Pit Stop. Join us next week, and we'll be watching episode nine of RuPaul's Drag Race season 12. Do you want everything RuPaul's Drag Race at your fingertips? Then head over to YouTube now and subscribe to the RuPaul's Drag Race channel, and you will get all the episodes of everything you ever want, including Brand new episodes of Whatcha Packin'. Hi.